thank you for joining today's telegenomics investor webinar. The company is listed on the venture exchange with the ticker TELO. Telegenomics is a diagnostic company that uses data analytics to provide medical professionals with actionable information for disease management. Joining me today are Sharif Lewis, who is the CEO of the company, and Guido Bechler, chairman of the company. Management will take us through the presentation, followed by a question and answer period. If you have any questions, you can enter them into the Q&A box below or email me at tina at adcap.ca. As always, the presentation may contain some forward-looking information, um, so you can view those disclaimers uh, in the presentation. So thanks, Sharif, for, for being here. Looking forward to hearing the presentation. Thanks for organizing this. It's uh, always a pleasure to be uh, around the, uh, the audience of investors and shareholders and share our story. It's always thrilling and a pleasure. So I'm going to get started with the presentation. And uh, as uh, as Tina said, we'll start with our forward-looking statement. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about uh, a real uh, unique and real disruptive technology and why it is uh, unique and disruptive, because it has the power to provide uh, desperately needed information in the clinic uh, information needed by healthcare providers and clinicians to make critical treatment decisions for uh, the improvement of the quality of life of patients, reduce treatment costs, reduce side effects. Um, why why the, the, the technology uh, is unique and can provide these desperate information compared to uh, others, uh, other technologies? Uh, simply, the technology uh, is uh, a three-dimensional analytic technology that provides sensitive and accurate information about key events that uh, is really representative to the stage of development and progression of the disease. It's a validated technology over a large number of uh, patients, 3,000 patients plus, that were all uh, uh, analyzed using the the Teleview technology and proof of concept studies, large number of uh, dilutive funding uh, was spent before the company's initiation, all that de risks the investment of this company. The company focused on the unmet need, and these are the desperate information that's needed in the clinic. Together with the way we collect this information, uh, we are focused on uh, liquid biopsy, which is minimally invasive uh, compared to traditional way of collecting specimens from uh, patients. Um, the company went into a very rigorous uh, due diligence with this uh, advantages. Uh, the, 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 the number of diseases that were employed uh, by the technology is very uh, broad. So we went into a due diligence process to identify the lead uh, 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 disease or the lead indication we want to work on, and that happened to be the multiple myeloma. Several factors were employed in this rigorous due diligence process um, away from uh, the scientific evidence that we have, away from uh, the uh, competitive landscape that is very promising. The forecasted uh, uh, addressable market reaches $4.6 billion uh, in 2027, and this according to market reports, it's not internal uh, studies. Based on these uh, advantages, we were able to develop very strong relationships and partnerships with key opinion leaders, the leaders in the management of uh, multiple myeloma, including uh, leaders and clinicians in the Mayo Clinic, as we're going to be uh, describing in the following slides. Uh, who is doing this? This is our leadership uh, team, Dr. Sabina Mai, a very dedicated scientist. Uh, she has uh, over 25 years uh, of experience in uh, leading cutting edge research about the initiation of cancer. Uh, she is a leader and a pioneer in uh, identifying uh, cancer uh, progression using the three dimensional structure of nucleus. Uh, numerous publications and millions and millions of dollars of uh, grant funding. And I'm joined today by uh, uh, Guido Baekler. He's our uh, chairman. We're really lucky to have uh, a talented and a veteran professional in the area of diagnostics like Guido. And I'll leave him to introduce himself uh, to, to the audience. 
Yeah, thank you, Sheriff, and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, excited to be here and share with you a little bit more about you know my my past. I spent the last thirty years in the diagnostic industry, um, uh, almost twenty years at, at Roche Diagnostics, uh, developing and and, and commercializing uh, state of the art uh, diagnostic tests. Many of them were molecular. And then afterwards, uh, took over smaller startups and um, uh, brought them to a commercial stage as well. So I'm, I'm excited to be with Tello. I've, I've, um, as Sheriff said, he, he's done a lot of evaluation as well. And I looked at the company before I joined. It was, it's really the potential of the telegenomics technology is, uh, is, is, is very, very significant because it does address a very important gap in the, in the clinical decision maker. Myeloma just being one of them, that really being able to ultimately tell a physician, yes, you should treat that small thing myeloma patients because the outcome is going to be better versus waiting uh, is very powerful, as well as other indications that chair will talk about it. So excited to be here and uh, participate in this webinar. Thank you so much, Guido. Uh, myself, I, uh, I've been with Telegenomics since 2015. I joined the company as Director of Clinical Operations. Um, and since 2018, I took over as CEO. Um, I've been over 20 years in the biotech industry, and I started on the technical side. I hold a doctoral degree in the initiation of cancer, and it happened to be uh, this technology that uh, we are talking about today. It's so thrilling to be part of uh, this incredible team and to participate in the commercialization of the technology. Uh, it's like living the dream, as they say, to see the work that uh, I worked on uh, during my doctoral uh, degree is uh, crossing the bridge between the bench and the bed, as they say, and uh, being an incredible uh, tool to uh, present, as I said, key information that are not present today in the in the in the clinic. Um, we uh, the technology stands tall, as I said. Over 14 diseases were validated, 3,000 patients, a lot of uh, non-dilutive funding, and the company stands also very strong on a, a, a robust foundation of intellectual property, 18 patents. Uh, all of them are granted except one. They cover the core of the technology and they cover the specific disease applications of the technology for uh, a lot of years to come until almost uh, 20, 34, 35. Uh, why this technology is, is unique? As I said, because it gives real representation of an important event that uh, happens driven by disease progression. This event is called genomic instability, changes in the genome of the patient uh, that is driven by the cancer. It's a very dynamic process. The ability to quantify this event is critical to inform on disease progression. This in turn leads to precision medicine, tailoring the treatment to each and every patient. This technology that we are talking about today can quantify genomic instability in a dynamic way and lead to precision medicine. This is the first key advantage, the foundational maybe uh, differentiator of the technology. The second uh, differentiator that I would present to you is the ability of the technology to analyze minimally invasive biopsy. Traditionally, patients will go to the hospital, they go through um, a surgical process to collect a, a traditional biopsy, very painful side effect, very costly, and more important, cannot be repeated frequently. Teloview technology is applicable on liquid biopsy, and we've been working on liquid, liquid biopsy since 2013, 2014. We have intellectual property around the technology applications in liquid biopsy very easy to repeat uh, as needed, which is critical in monitoring disease progression. The third advantage is the single cell analysis. How we do it? We go and label telomeres. They are the end of chromosomes. Uh, telomeres uh, is a common term. Everybody hear about telomeres and aging. We take telomeres analysis into a very different perspective. Uh, we label telomeres, and then we build three-dimensional images of the cells using cutting-edge microscopy, and then analyze this three-dimensional image using the proprietary software Teleview. It's a multi-parametric analysis. Most of uh, telomere technologies uh, or biomarkers, they focus on 
one aspect that is known to everyone, which is telomere's length. Telomere's length is included in Teleview analytics, but it's not the only parameter. We do a multi-parametric analysis quantifying six different parameters. We develop a formula that make a decision on the patient disease progression based on the quantification of these parameters, all of them. Uh, with this, these advantages, as I said, the applications are so broad, but we went into our due diligence in 2019 and identified multiple myeloma as a lead indication. Multiple myeloma is an incurable deadly cancer. It's a blood uh, cancer. Um, uh, currently in the US only, there is over 140,000 active cases. Uh, symptoms include a very uh, harsh bone uh, uh, failure and bone fractures, uh, uh, um, different uh, recurrent infections, kidney problems, uh, organ failure in general. Um, the, as you said, the, uh, the addressable market, the diagnostics address addressable market for multiple myeloma is expected to grow to $4.7 billion in 2027. Uh, the, the disease progression uh, starts from two early stage asymptomatic forms of the disease, uh, angas and smoldering myeloma patients. These patients are normally will not be treated, will be monitored. However, uh, without clear indication that can be measured in the clinic to date, 10% of these of the smoldering patients will progress to full stage of the disease symptomatic with organ failure or all the side effects. Uh, and these patients to date cannot be identified. Furthermore, the moment the patients are uh, diagnosed with full stage myeloma, they receive treatments in the form of combination chemotherapies. Patients will normally will not res will, will respond to this therapy and within three months to a year, with no exception, all of them will stop responding and need alternate and different uh, treatments. And that's where the value of technology, of teleview technology and telegenomics technology comes in place. We focus on these two areas, the smoldering myeloma, transition to multiple myeloma, and the response of patients to therapy. We have two uh, active clinical studies in collaboration with the Mayo Clinic. Uh, the first one is uh, focused on identifying high-risk smoldering patients that will transition to active multiple myeloma. At the moment, there is no test that can accurately identify these patients. We are just in the International Myeloma uh, Workshop uh, last month, and it's the key unmet need in handling uh, multiple myeloma, identifying these patients. If the clinicians will identify them, they will treat them. And the clinical study that we are running in collaboration with the Mayo Clinic is focused on addressing this unmet need. If these patients are identified, number one, the patient that will walk into the clinic, uh, the smoldering patient that, you know, will get his uh, hip puncture to collect the bone marrow biopsy, uh, go home uh, not knowing if he will progress or not, or not. even the clinicians does not know if, uh, would not know if he will progress or not, and all of a sudden he wake up with full stage myeloma, that test once developed has the ability to identify these patients and the clinicians will treat him right away. Uh, will we'll, uh, add a lot of value to the quality of life of the patient, will add, uh, will present this desperately needed information to the clinician and even for drug developers will identify new markets for them. These patients are not being treated for now even for the payers, it's gonna be a value added to them because these patients are not treated with the full spectrum of the, the, the treatments that, that are received by uh, uh, full stage multiple myeloma. So that clinical study is ongoing with the Mayo Clinic. Another clinical study ongoing with the Mayo Clinic as well is uh, predicting the patient's response to first line therapy. These patients are already in the multiple myeloma stage, newly diagnosed, receive first-line therapy, they will stop responding to the first-line therapy within three months to a year. The ability to predict who are these patients will, again, present information to the clinicians to switch them to alternate treatment modalities. 
And uh, with the advancement in the development, the drug development of multiple myeloma, there are several options. Just to date, the clinicians cannot identify the patients that will stop responding to the disease. The annual cost of therapy for multiple myeloma patients is over $100,000 per year. Um, with this, uh, two clinical studies in the pipeline, uh, what are the, the commercializ commercialization avenues for us? And with this, I would hand it to uh, Guido to uh, give his overview about how Teleview is uh, approaching commercializ commercialization and revenue generation path. Great. Thank, thank you, Sherry. If you're just picking up on what Sherry mentioned before, this this smoldering myeloma, myeloma uh, identification and, and, and progression into clinical uh, myeloma is, is critical. And as we move forward with, with the Mayo studies, we in parallel are starting to um, discuss and, and implement commercialization strategies, not just in Canada, but also in the United States. So when you look at the different ways you can actually commercialize the technology, and this goes a little bit broader than just the, the multiple myeloma test, but clearly um, for us to uh, get into the United States, into the market, you know, it is, it is done with the development of a, of a laboratory developed test. That's a very specific approach to commercialize such tests in the United States. And we would do this, you know, for example, through a direct sales um, with, a single, with a single specialized lab uh, in, in, in the US. This could be a partner lab uh, but it could also be our own lab. And we're certainly starting to think about how do we best, you know, accelerate the commercialization as, as Sheriff starts moving forward with, with the clinical development. We can also think about um, licensing or sale uh, our technology to pharmaceutical companies. You know, this is the pharmaceutical companies having, they are evaluating alternative technologies to help them identify the right patients for the right studies. Many studies in the past have failed because of simply a wrong selection of patients. And so we're, with our uh, publications that we have, which you can find on our website, we have actually a very broad portfolio to potentially help those pharma partners to identify the right part, the right patients. And as a result, this could be something that we, uh, a great opportunity for us, which we are also exploring. We can also, you know, license the technology to a laboratory in the US, for example, already is in the oncology space who just adds our tests as another uh, as, as another marker to to their to their portfolio. Um, the advantage here you have the already established established sales organization, established commercial setups. That's another way of looking at it. And of course the the ultimate solution is always you, you do your own because of that product we have, we could actually do a true IVD. Um, test and get that through the FDA approved. That's another alternative that we're looking at. So there's there's multiple areas on it. Clearly, the the the, the path we do want to explore is is going th through an, an LDT test in the United States. We will then, of course, at the same time also start the discussion with uh, reimbursement agencies to make sure everything is actually in line, as when we when we have everything ready to commercialize it and also have an established reimbursement process. Sheriff, you can go to the next slide. That shows you a few, a few examples of um, current and some past uh, pricing of um, tests that are in the, uh, in, in most of the new oncology space um, that used, uh, they are commercialized in US as, as LDTs. Some are uh, FDA approved, but most of them are. Um, LDTs, and so you see the price range where these tests are. So pair this up with with Sheriff's um, outline of a uh, number of patients are actually um, could really benefit from 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 our test. This turns into a quite substantial opportunity for telegenomics that we're uh, pushing forward at this stage. I think the rest goes back to you, Sheriff. Thank you, Guido. So. Just to, to recap and, and to make sure uh, for clarity that this technology is not only applicable to multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma is our lead indication. The applications of this technology is very broad across uh, cancers and neurological diseases. As I said, it's uh, sensitive and accurate and provide real representation of disease progression. This applies to a number of cancers. All these diseases that are on the slide were actually uh, validated on small scale proof of principle studies in the academic lab. 
they are listed here in kind of a priority list uh, or a pipeline. Hematological disorders are our highest priority based on the fact that myeloma is our lead indication, followed by a number of diseases that we have very strong evidence and fit well into the pipeline once we have the products of multiple myeloma out of the door and the rest of the cancers that were also validated on different uh, scales using this technology. Uh, we are so fortunate to, uh, to be advised and guided by key opinion leaders and leaders in the areas where we are developing uh, clinical tests. Ken Anderson, uh, he is the leader, current leader of multiple myeloma, uh, I would say globally. We were there and we, we saw that in the International Myeloma Workshop. Um, everybody looks up to him and we are very fortunate to have him on our uh, clinical advisory board since 2016. He, um, he's a big believer in the technology. He is a big supporter. Uh, he made a, a number of introductions uh, for us with other leaders in the field. Uh, he spent with us time uh, as needed, I would say, in in-person meetings, on phone calls. We're so lucky to have Ken Anderson from uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. We also have Dr. Klotz in the area of prostate cancer. Uh, Dr. Kneshet is a long-term collaborator from uh, the McGill University, Jewish General Hospital here in, the, in Canada, in Montreal. We have a number of publications with him in the area of hematological disorders as well. Dr. Drakenberg in the area of prostate cancer. Finally, this is like the PubCo information of uh, the company. Um, our cash position uh, was around $4 million by the end of August. We maintain a very uh, responsible budget uh, across uh, COVID and post-COVID, uh, really, uh, incredible burn rate of uh, around 100, average of 100K per month. Um, the ownership, as you see, it's split 70% uh, around retail, 17% uh, institutions, and only 15% owned by uh, directors and officers of the company. And with this, I will stop and take any questions, and Guido will uh, uh, as well be supporting me in the questions. Great, thanks. Um, so if anyone has any questions, you can enter them into the Q&A box below, as I mentioned earlier. Um, good presentation. And if anyone has ever had a tissue biopsy, you'll know why this technology is so important and it's not fun. Um, one of the things that I wanted to just reiterate and chat about a bit is, um, you know, this is not a biotech co company where there's a, a binary result, I guess, from, from the studies that you're doing. This is a well-researched technology. I think um, the, the technology uh, was developed in 2005 and 2015, it, it started to become commercialized. So can you walk through a little bit of, of the history of the technology? For sure. Uh, thanks, Tina, for that question. Uh, this is really a, a story that we love to share because um, it's it's a story of I would say uh, success and uh, and uh, you know going through all the the, the hurdles and ups and downs uh, from 20, 2004. Um, so I was a student in Dr. Mai's lab in 2004. I was a doctorate student, PhD student, and uh, this technology uh, we we saw the very first clues that came on a microscope and on a, a monitor of a, of a computer. And we start, uh, you know, talking about it and, and, and brainstorming about it. What can we do with these observations? The first um, intellectual property or patents were filed around 2004, 2005. Uh, same with the publication of the first uh, scientific evidence that proving the validity of this technology was 2004, 2005. Uh, from 2005 to 2015, Dr. Mai in her academic uh, laboratory, she uh, applied this technology to a number of cancers, uh, filed more and more uh, patents, and by 2015, the company was launched as a private company. Uh, you know, traditional story startup in uh, university, around the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, Manitoba, in the prairies. Uh, 2006, the company went public and uh, decided to relocate to Toronto. Toronto is the biotech hub, really, where all the healthcare-related technologies are housed. So we moved here uh, to the Mars Center in Toronto um, around 2017. Um, since then, we uh, completed a clinical study uh, around Hodgkin's lymphoma, then identified multiple myeloma as a lead indication. And as I said, in 
late 2019, early 2020, we developed this collaboration with the Mayo Clinic. We're waiting for the results of these studies. It's going to be an incredible, important milestone that will enrich the value of this company and give appreciation really by a third party validation to the power of, of this technology and uh, what can do. We realized that partnerships are very important. So uh, we focused on uh, gearing towards that path. We have uh, Greg Mayer on our team. He's uh, he generated a lot of leads. Uh, we had incredible presentations with large uh, players in, in the in the in the field in the diagnostics field we're so thrilled for that uh, we also uh, realized that we need to um, you know stand up for the transformation from an academic research lab to a real biotech lab so we are seeking laboratory accreditation as we speak we are in the process of fulfilling the requirement of uh, ISO 15189 it's typical for medical laboratories and it is recognized in Canada in the US and worldwide it's going to give us a complete uh, different look and appreciation and credibility uh, uh, to uh, uh, you know industrial partnerships whether pharma or diagnostics so that's uh, you know a quick recap on the history up till from 2040 to today and you announced this morning that you uh, received the first batch of samples that have been processed and uh, the rest of the samples are expected sometime in Q4? Exactly. Actually, we, uh, we received these uh, samples a few months ago and uh, we processed them. We're so anxious and we wanted to see how uh, these samples are going to work in our hands. Uh, we generated results that uh, um, still we cannot really uh, talk about, but uh, I, we shared these results with the lead clinical uh, investigator on the study, Dr. Shaji Kumar from the Mayo Clinic, and that we discussed this in, with him in the International Myeloma Workshop. We defined uh, you know, milestones and timelines, and we're expecting uh, a batch uh, of samples to be received in Q4 that would really take us way far ahead in this clinical study. And the press release also alluded to a potential prospective study, which is a bit different from the studies that you've uh, been working on with Mayo. Do you have any thoughts on what that might look like, or is it too early to say at this point? For sure, the you know the the studies or development of a, of an LDT, as Guido pointed, um, can be completed using the retrospective studies that are planned and are written in stone. Uh, it is very common in, in uh, presenting the, the, the test to the wide community of uh, clinicians in particular disease to run a prospective validation study. However, these prospective validation studies are commonly ran after the test is developed as an LDT and being used, actually, you generate data using the patients that are coming in, using the test uh, as a, a laboratory developed test and using the test report for uh, treatment decisions. Great. And once you get these results back from the Mayo Clinic um, and they kind of prove out the, the thesis, what are the next steps for the company? The, we, the following step, uh, you know, again, as I said, like the, the sky is the limit and uh, Guido can probably uh, also pitch on that as well. Uh, the outlook of the company beyond uh, developing uh, an LDT with the Mayo Clinic, I, I would actually pass it to Guido to comment on that. Yeah, yeah so we'll be able to commercialize in U.S. as an LDT, right? So Sheriff, you know, I think you've seen some announcement we made. We brought some experts on the board as well to help us actually uh, assess the ability to be a CLIA lab based in Toronto. Um, Mark Steen, that we announced, also has a lot of experience in the US. So we're exploring that as well. So the idea really is to then implement our technology in a CLIA lab in Toronto and potentially in the US, really start the commercialization process once we have done the initial study and write the follow study. So this is the sequence, right? You must have the clinical data available to be able to start commercializing it. So, and this all depends on the timing that Sheriff just outlined. We need to get the results, we get to get the samples and test them, and then we continue with uh, with the next study. And what's your expectation in terms of uh, the timeline for ISO certification? Sheriff, you want to take that one? 
Yeah, sure. Like, what, what really the, the, the pivotal milestone that we're waiting for is to generate the Mayo Clinic data. Uh, this is going to be a day and night third party uh, validation for the technology done with a key uh, center uh, in, in the area of multiple myeloma, uh, one of the most important centers, and uh, they are the most important center in the, in the care of uh, and the management of smoldering patients. So this validation is going to be a day and night a change and improvement in the valuation of the company as a whole. And that's what, would, what the, the, the results of this study is what's going to put the company and its right and correct and, and compat, uh, uh, accurate level of uh, what this technology uh, can provide uh, to the diagnostics field. It looks like there are a few questions from the audience about uh, time frame to commercialization and path to revenue. So maybe you can provide an overview of that, but also discuss, um, it sounds like partnership agreements could be coming before, before revenue generation. So maybe can you discuss that dynamic as well? For sure. Um, as I said, we have uh, uh, Greg Mayer on our team uh, as a consultant retained from the U.S., uh, he's a veteran in this uh, particular uh, area, partnerships, uh, diagnostics, and and uh, and uh, medical device partnerships. Um, as I said, he uh, he generated for us a lot of leads. We had the incredible discussions with large and medium-sized uh, uh, firms in the area, in the in the industry. Uh, partnerships is always around the corner, and as I said, like you know, we are. Uh, getting ourselves prepared for prime time, as they say, uh, the, the lab accreditation, whether ISO or CLIA, the Mayo uh, study uh, results, all this is going to be in incredibly useful for us to uh, materialize uh, our discussions about partnerships. Um, clinical studies, uh, they have a, a, a common path. And as I said, we're expecting a set of uh, samples from the Mayo Clinic. That is going to take us way, way far in the development of, of these tests. Uh, we are fortunate with this technology that we do not need to run thousands and thousands of patients. Uh, the technology is very sensitive that we can reach robustness in prediction with very, very small number of patients relative to others, which again cut on the time and cut on the cost. Yeah, yeah maybe maybe Tina can just add another point here. So as as Sharif said, you know the the revenue question is important, but it's all about the the milestones that we're accomplishing. And we have seen in many other companies, you know, you can have nice um, deals with with strategic partners way before you have a lot of revenue. So that's really important to us that we continue to push this forward uh, to really you know make te telegenomics. As a as a clear you know player in the field you're in, just just a little cover you know uh, tidbit on the the conference in Vienna that that the team participated. It was very clear that you know there is and the thing I saw one of the question is um, what what are some other competitive technologies out there? You know there is not one company that is actually addressing that specific smoldering issue that has shown you know. Maybe companies working behind the scenes have no publication or anything clinically as relevant as what we have shown in the past. So clearly we are ahead of the game. We are the leader in that space, and that's why we continue to drive forward with that specific study with Mayo, which we didn't start, again, building up the commercialization plan and get this into the US market as aggressive as we can. So just kind of wrap, wrap this up. There's, there's, I saw there's several other questions. I don't know how much time we have, but clearly the team is very heavily focused on getting the study done you know, um, really driving this forward, getting the ISO, getting the CLIA certified. And this is a well-established process. Um, but it is it is depending on like exactly, you know, Sheriff said, we get the samples in the next the next couple of months. We run this through. Um, those are the really important milestones for us to then really trigger the next commercial step. And uh, we've talked about this with Sharif uh, on, on other calls, but the amount of investment going into the liquid biopsy space in general is massive in the U.S. So maybe you can touch on what the landscape in the U.S. looks like right now. Yeah. So, yeah, since since I am in the U.S., I can talk about it. So it's, it's, it's amazing when you see um, the companies that are in the liquid biopsy space, uh, almost no week comes in without another announcement of companies raising hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, a lot of them are very much focused on pain, pain cancer, meaning basically measuring a blood sample and uh, 
trying to detect 10 different cancers, um, which you didn't confer to follow up. There's a lot of activities going on in that. There's all the smaller uh, applications that companies look at it, but clearly liquid biopsy is absolute. Um, I would say one of the hottest market to be in right now. And so that's a, a result for us as well, right? We're, we're not directly competing with these companies. We're actually adding additional clinical information to those, to those markets to, 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 to differentiate us and actually make a better clinical result, which is the wonderful story. That's why I like the company, like the technology, because, you know, we are really a critical addition of, of, it, of information that's not available today. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how much investment has gone into the space over the last few years, um, especially with, with precision medicine. And it's, um, you know, they're, they're certainly not short of funding in terms of private equity and, and um, institutions who are looking at, at this space. Um, on the on this conversation of U.S., any plans for a U.S. listing? I, I don't think we can give any further comments on that. You know, at this stage. And on the capital market side, um, do you have a specific capital market strategy uh, in order to support the stock price? Sure, if you want to take that on first. Well, um, it, as I said, like the um, like we are we're very cognitive about our you know uh, budgets and our burn rates and. Uh, we uh, we forecast well, you know, the cost of our clinical studies, and um, we are we're comfortable uh, as we are, and we know that um, once we, as I said, like once we achieve the milestones that we spoke about, uh, the mile, the particularly the Mayo results, uh, this is gonna you know push us really really ahead on the valuation of the company, and will make us in much better position to think back and evaluate the options that we have. And uh, the last few questions are kind of around the timeline um, of commercialization um, and some of the key milestones. Can you provide just a, a summary of what the next six to 12 months will look like for the company? For sure. Uh, in the second six to 12 months, we, uh, we're expecting to complete the two stages of uh, the Mayo clinical study. And as I said, this is really critical for the company. Uh, we expect to achieve uh, at least one or perhaps two accreditation uh, for uh, the laboratory here, which will uh, officially uh, present us as a, a reference lab that can present and can develop uh, uh, independent laboratory developed tests, which make us uh, extremely ready uh, for partnerships with industry. So uh, th these are the key uh, milestones that we expect to see in the coming uh, six, 12 months, uh, one or two stages of the myeloma uh, studies with the Mayo Clinic, uh, lab certification, uh, partnerships with uh, industry. Great. And, and just in terms of timing, I think, you know, this is a really good time to be looking at the company. There's a number of significant milestones that I think will be, have a cascading effect in terms of um, relationships with, with partners and, and getting to that revenue uh, standpoint and commercialization. So I think this is a really good time to be uh, taking a look at the story. And uh, if you have any last words, Sharif and Guido, I'll, I'll leave you to it. But uh, thank you so much for the presentation. It's great. Appreciate everybody's time.